Good evening, BookTube. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. It's been a couple days here in West Michigan. It is 7.10 at night. It is March the 12th. It is a Friday night, so this is a Friday Reads. One thing about making videos, I don't know what to, uh, how to label them or describe them. Because um, I have, I go to thrift stores, I collect used books, uh, I read all the time, and so I just, I thought about making videos and just putting the date on them, like this is March the 12th, 2021, at 7.11 p.m. at night, instead because you look at all my videos for the last five years, you have Friday reads, Wednesday reads, Monday reads, thrift store hauls. I used to, in the beginning, I used to use all kinds of crazy descriptions for my videos, but I got in trouble with YouTube because they told me a long time ago that your videos, you have to describe in your what your your label, your capture, whatever that is, it has to fit what your video is. So if I use some crazy title and it doesn't fit the content of the video, I can get penalized and thrown off YouTube. So and also when I first started Booktube I used to there's like a tag and I used to use Booktube. And then I realized a couple years ago that my book to I'm not really what my videos really are are is a diary of a Christian bookworm so now I just tag it a diary because that's being truthful to what my videos are they're the the reading life of a old Christian bookworm who collects books now I think people know by now that the books all the books that are shown in these videos for the last five years, I don't read them all. I read all the time, but I don't read what I collect. I just like that it's my hobby. I, I don't I don't collect cars, you know, I'm not uh, an extreme skier. I don't play darts at bars. I'm not into anything except books and writing and living out before God and seeking to live a holy Christian life. That's you know, I've always been into books, no matter what my present state of being is or where I'm at in my life, teenager, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, now 60s, I've always, there's always been books and writing in my diary. I've been writing in my diary a diary since I was in high school. I've always, even when I was the most, if I was homeless or I was living out in the woods or I was hitchhiking on a freeway or I was at my girlfriend's house or I was at work somewhere, even when I was working my last job, I always carried in my back pocket a pen and a piece of blank paper folded up. And if during that work shift before break if I had some idea I'd write it down and then when I got home at night that idea or thought would it I would remember what I wanted to write down in my diary or on my online diaries and when I was not working on my days off I wrote and when we were raising our kids I wrote and I've been writing at least I have downstairs in the lower level 42 years of diaries that, and I've written every single day and uh, I start writing in 1968 and I, as I've mentioned in past videos when I felt when I left California in 1978 to go to Bible College I burned all my diaries but I didn't have a whole year so I didn't burn the year 1978. And I kept also some letters and some other things I didn't burn. 
and uh, so the point is that my life has been books and you know I've you know my marriage to Kara we've been married this coming May 2021 my wife and I've been married 42 years <laughs> and our kids are grown our oldest is 40 years old and and we have a son, another son, who lives in Washington. And and Carol left the day to go visit our daughter, Bethany, who is our youngest, who lives in Denver, Colorado, with her four children, Louisa, Margaret, Jack, and Nora. And she's married to Andy, who's an engineer, and she's a stay-at-home mom. So now that when my wife is gone, she'll be gone for 10 days, what do I do? I read and I write in my diary, and that's what I always do. And I, to, tonight I'm on page 267 for the year 2021. And I, did, I write a lot when my wife is gone. I might write, well, I've written today. How many pages have I written today? One, two, three, four, I've written five pages. My average day is I write three pages a day, sometimes two. And I also I write on my online diaries, but what I write in my live journal online diary, Crooked Fingers, I paste in three other online diaries. I just do that because that's what I do. I am, um, why not? And uh, so this is the Friday Reads. What I've been reading today, today when I got up, my wife wanted to go grocery shopping because she wanted to leave me with food to eat. And when I went shopping today, this morning, I bought things that I like to eat when my wife is gone, which is basically junk food. <laughs> I, I'm not really into eating salads or vegetables or I just like like oatmeal in the morning and a sandwich in the afternoon and some something light in the evening. I'm not really into food. I don't really like eating food. Yeah, I'm just not into eating. So my wife made homemade soup in the morning, a big huge pot of homemade, homemade chicken noodle soup. So I'll probably eat that for dinner and have a sandwich in the afternoon and water and bowl of oatmeal in the morning with some grapes or strawberries and that's what I leave that's what I eat so I went along with her and got some things like that bagels and bread and grapes and apple cider and milk and things like that that's what I read today so when I got home we got home to we got home and I went to thrift stores today we went to thrift stores after we went grocery shopping. My wife wanted to stop at some thrift store. And she got some books. I bought one book. And then when we got home from grocery shopping, I ate a, an early lunch. And then I went to North Side, no, South Side Goodwill and found one book. So I do have a small stack of thrift store books that I'll show in a future video. I'm just going to show you what I, gonna, what I read today. Uh... I read today Reform Dogmatics by Herman Babic. I didn't read this whole thing. I just read from volume three. I've been reading the section on the order of salvation. I've been reading that section in here. The reason why I'm doing that is because in reading Lunoff of Saxony, who was, uh, this was written in the uh, the High Middle Ages. Uh, this is full of Roman Catholic doctrine. And there's things in it that I don't agree with because I am a child of the Reformation. And so, uh, so I read Reformed Dogmatics and Reformed Theology to see that how we differ on different doctrines, like on the, the sacraments on salvation, uh, the worship of saints, and, and also I look at my commentaries because 
He's going through the different gospel narratives, and today he was going through gospel ja uh, chapter 3 of John, which you have the story of Nicodemus coming to the Lord at night, and you have that famous chapter where Jesus says, you must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. And I noticed when I was reading uh, Rudolph of Saxony, he, he, when Jesus was talking about the new birth, he said Jesus was talking about the sacrament of baptism. <laughs> and he had nothing to say about regeneration, about what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be born of the Spirit, uh, the water and the Spirit? He just completely passed over it. And so I was really surprised. And so what I did... I got out my Reformation commentary on John chapters 1 through 12, and I was reading, not, well, as I said, the Reformation commentary not only has Reformers, it has uh, Counter-Reformation theologians, they have Anabaptists, Lutherans, it's not just strictly Reformed, but they do basically have a, a consensus on what the text means generally. So I was reading this on that that verse where Jesus talks about uh, the new birth which goes like I did, I get I read it in my Bible here it says um, John chapter 3 he says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say unto you, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but it cannot, it cannot tell where it comes from. For where it goes, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And when I was reading this, he just just passed right out. He just went, he just barely went into that that those verses. So, whereas in in in, in the Reformation and the Protestants, there's they talk about regeneration. What does it mean to be born again? What is it? What is regeneration? And like in regeneration, this is by Peter Van Manstrit. Uh, this is from his his uh, reform dogmatics. This is just a selection that was printed a number of years ago. And I was reading that, and I'll just read you a little bit from it, where he goes into this. He says, To these are Nicodemus, as he was a first, he must have been accustomed. Others by water here understand the sacramental water of baptism, by which they suppose the Spirit effects regeneration. And here again, some suppose the baptismal water to be directly intended, as do most of the fathers, others only by way of illusion. Others more rightly understand these to be but one thing expressed by two terms, as the water of the Spirit, or spiritual water, or rather the Spirit, having the properties of water, which like water cleanses and regeneration. For our Savior does not mean to lead Nicodemus, Nicodemus to receive the sacrament of baptism, which at that time was not instituted at least as an ordinary universal sacrament, but to seek the regeneration of the Holy Ghost. Titus 3, 5. Ye save us by the washing of regeneration. Wherefore, in the continuation of this discourse, our Savior makes no further mention of water, but only of the Spirit, verses 6 through 8, which uh, he reads 6 through 8 says, we read, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. 
Do not marvel that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, but you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from where it goes. So everyone who is born of the Spirit. No mention of water in those verses. I need not observe that by the Spirit is to be understood the third person of the sacred trinity with relation to the work of spiritual purification, which is effected by the regeneration and reven to be re reno to be renovation. Titus 3 5. I could read you from the Reformation commentary, but it's a very long quote, so I won't do that. So that's what I do. I, I, when I read, when I read, uh, the, who's a, he's a, a Roman Catholic, I check it out reading from the Reformed Dogmatics of Bavic. I'm also reading the Holy Spirit Church of New Creation, Volume 4 of Bavic. I'm reading him on the, the, uh, I'm reading him on Faith and Conversion. So this is my Friday reads, Herman Bavick, Peter Van Manstrit, reading the Bible, the Gospel of John, reading the Reformation Commentary on John chapter 3, and also when I, and this I'll be getting into the Sermon on the Mount, this, either this weekend or next week, and I plan to read from William Perkins, volume 1, he's the father of English Puritanism. This is, he has his exposition of Christ's Sermon on the Mount in here. So I'll be contrasting these two guys, William Perkins and Ludolf of Saxony, and how they understand the Gospel, uh, the Sermon on the Mount that's found in the Gospel of Matthew. And I got other books. I'll look at my more modern commentaries on Matthew. My, I have books on the Sermon on the Mount there in the Gospel of Matthew. And that's what I do. And when I'm not reading these Christian books, I start reading again last night, The Life, uh, The Henry Thoreau, A Life by Laura Daslow Wallace. And I'm reading uh, Walden again by Henry David Thoreau. I finished reading the novel The Very Long Engagement by Sebastian J Jack Scott. This is translated out of the French by, what's her name, Linda Coverdale. I really enjoyed this novel. I'm thinking about, I might do a book review of it, you know, that little format that I did on LA Confidential uh, several weeks ago. I might, I'm still thinking about it, but I really enjoyed this novel, and um, so I, I recommend it. Uh, so that's it. So when my wife is gone for 10 days, I read, I write, and uh, sometimes I'll leave the house and go visit thrift stores. I don't plan to go anywhere besides thrift stores. I got plenty of food. I'll read, I'll listen to me. Yeah, when my wife is gone, I can listen to my, my music. I can burn incense. My wife is allergic to incense, so when she's when she's not home, when she's when she's not home, I burn incense. <laughs> Use it, and so and I can play music anytime, really loud, <laughs> and that's what I'll do. So I hope you had a good week. That you have a good reading weekend. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. And yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I am feeling better. I start feeling better. Friday night about 10 o'clock. All of a sudden, I start feeling better. And my doctor called and said my blood work, my urine, all that was fine. Nothing was, nothing could be found wrong with me. So I figured what it was is a mystery. <laughs> but I'm feeling better. And I thank you for all your prayers and for all your words of concern. And... So yeah, I'm feeling fine. I'm a little tired, but that's kind of normal. I don't feel depressed. I just feel kind of like in, in the middle. I do miss my wife. I do miss her. I, I like my wife always near me. I don't like her being gone, but I, I recognize that my 
my daughter Bethany in Denver and our grandchildren in Denver. They need to see their nanny. <laughs> and plus little Nora is about four months old now. Nora and Carol loves her grandchildren. She loves all of them. And they all love to be around Nani. So, so I have to share my wife with our children and our grandchildren. And, and, that, and I know she'll come back in 10 days, hopefully. And So I know, it's just the way it is. You know, she goes every spring, she goes to Denver. In August, when our son's wife, Hannah, has her second child, Lilia, well, was it L Lilia? I can't remember now. L Lilia. Lilia Jubilee in August. Carol's going to fly out there. Whenever we have a grandchild, Carol is always there when they're born. <laughs> so I'll sign off. And yeah, and I'll probably make a video tomorrow. I'll probably make videos every day and just talk because I got to talk to somebody. I'm always talking to myself. I'm always writing in my diary. I'm always praying to God. I'm, I talk to my wife. My wife talks to me. But usually I'm kind of a quiet person because I really have nothing to say. So once again, thank you for all your comments and your support, your subscribing. And do pray that you have a good weekend. And until next time, bye.